Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're inside of Illustrator doing an advanced tutorial on how to create advanced isometric artwork. Um, you can see here that I'm time lapsing through making the flat planes that we need for our isometric artwork on a Game Boy here. Um, we've got the front, side and bottom plane which when finished are going to be translated into the three planes that we need to create our sort of 3D isometric artwork. Um, the reason I'm speeding through this is because it is a bit of an advanced tutorial. It's gonna be long enough already. And if you don't know how to do this sort of thing, then you're probably not gonna be able to keep up with the rest of the stuff that I'm gonna go through today. So if you are struggling, I recommend watching my intro to Illustrator series, which uh, covers the basics of what we're gonna go through today. Um, having said that, let's dive right in. Try not to get put off by the uh, length of this one. Um, it is quite an in-depth and unique thing and um, there's lots of different ways to achieve the same results. So having said that, let's just dive right in. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to start off with some assets that we've already got made here. Um, I worked my way on quite a simple design of the new Nintendo Switch, um, which I created just completely flat. Then I turned those using some actions that I made into isometric artwork, and then I filled out uh, the colors to create the finished product. This is quite a simple version uh, and as you can see the original Game Boy is a lot more complicated here and that's why I'm working on the more complicated one today to show you just how powerful this is uh, if a little bit of a manual process. Now the first thing I'll explain is I've set up some actions here which essentially perform a series of commands um, that turn anything that I draw flat into a perfect isometric or near enough perfect isometric uh, plane. For example, I can run an action flat to floor, which takes any square that I make or any shape that I make uh, and turns it into the floor axis of isometric artwork. And I've got the same for the left and right planes as well. For example, if I just go to button mode here on actions, I've got flat to floor, flat to left and flat to right. And that allows me to quite simply build a isometric cube. Not only that, but I've got commands to turn them all back to normal again, just in case I need to, okay? Now, all I've done for this, as you saw in the time-lapse, is I've created three flat elements that as far as the computer is concerned, might as well be a cube. And each of these is gonna translate to one of the sides of our isometric artwork here. Now to make all of this, like I said, I cover the basics of Illustrator in my intro to Illustrator series. If you don't know how to do that, uh, go and watch that first. But it was just simply a case of making some rounded rectangles, tracing over an image that I had, you know, adjusting the different corners to match things up and then creating those flat shapes. Okay, really, really simple stuff. Now, when you're creating this, because you're creating it from a flat image or from memory or from whatever, there's going to be some bits that don't quite line up when you get to the isometric side of things. For example, although this section on the side of the Game Boy here looks like it's flush with the um, edge of the Game Boy, it's actually curved in under the bottom. So when you translate that to isometric, you're going to have a line here that you're going to need to remove and just understand that is actually underneath the Game Boy. This is not finished, okay? This is um, just stage one, and I'm going to replicate this now with you guys, and then we're going to move on to stage two, which is actually raising all the buttons and in the individual things, um, recessing these lines here, things like that. I just wanted to show you what the original planes look like and what they are once you've roughly built the rough model. Okay, so I'm just going to shift this out of the way up the top. Now, you can download these from my website as a set of actions, so you don't have to make them yourself. Um, but I do have another tutorial um, on Illustrator actions, which you can watch to create these if you want to create your own. Otherwise, you can go to tiptart.xyz, go to the resources page, and you can download this set of actions here, okay? So having said that, let's dive right in. Let's take our first flat plane that we know we're gonna to want to be the floor or the top bottom plane of existence on our isometric shape. Now, it's very important to understand that there is a bunch of mathematics involved when translating to isometric view. If you're using the actions, you don't need to worry about it. But suffice to say that if you are holding this um, sort of object up in front of you, imagine the way you hold your phone usually. Um, the way the isometric works is, is imagining if you lay that down flat on the table and then twisted it 30 degrees to the right. 
Okay, so anything that you're looking at flat is as if you're holding up something in front of your eyes. You twist it 90 degrees away from you and then 30 degrees towards the right um, or the left. And that is how you get your isometric view. What that means in terms of artwork is if I were to create two shapes like this, okay, and I use the same action, that's going to get completely different results. For example, if I flatten this to floor whilst it's standing up, we get the result that we see here, okay? If I were to flatten this, it would still be isometric, but it would be facing the other way, okay? The head of the Game Boy would be down here, like so. So that's how you get things facing different directions. Of course, then you'd need the left-hand side of the Game Boy, the top of the Game Boy, if you wanted to do it this way. Because we're doing it this way, we only need the right-hand side and the bottom, okay? So it's important to note that when you're working from um, these 2D flat elements, the rotation that you start with is very important in terms of the direction of what that's going to be in the final product. So let's do it. We're going to take the top level here and turn it to the floor. We're going to duplicate this level on the right here and turn it to the right. But as you can see, because it wasn't rotated the right way, it looks like the Game Boy is standing up, okay? So it's gone nine degrees and twisted to the right. So what we need to do is actually spin this on its side and do the same thing. And that pushes it back into the direction that we need, okay? Let's grab the bottom, flat to left, and that pushes it. So we've now got our three um, planes of existence. Now, this looks complicated, but it is actually no more complicated in terms of angles than our original simple three cube earlier okay we've got the top of the game boy we've got the left hand side or the bottom of the game boy in this case and we've got our right hand side or the side of the game boy in this case okay um all these lines and intricacies are just the bits that we now need to match up manually um because of certain um discrepancies in the fact that it isn't a solid cube for example on a real game boy um this sort of curved in section here is actually flattened along here. So this actually dips down. Now, obviously on the line work, you can't see that. So when you match these up, you're going to get some odd stuff here, which I've had to fix manually. Okay. Now there is a little bit of manual process in this, but that's inevitable. You're making something very complicated. You're not just going to be able to do it with a few clicks. So um, settle in for a long ride, essentially. However, the first thing you need to do is just line up your different sides of your cube. And luckily, we've got some nice artwork that we can do so here uh, by just lining up these elements. It's probably easier for you guys if you are following along. And I will put a download code to this um, in the description, which hopefully you've already checked. Um, you can right click and set to outlines. And what this does is it only views the outlines of your artwork without any styling applied to it, which makes it just a little bit easier to line up. OK, so grab an anchor, making sure that you've got smart guides turned on and line it up with another anchor and there you go you can see that works now you could try lining up the corners but again because these are curved corners it's going to be a little bit difficult um, so instead it's probably best to line up your different elements by an element that you know has to be perfect now of course this isn't going to be perfectly lined up because i've made this manually um, so there's going to be a little bit of discrepancy here that's fine though, you can just grab your shape and you can sort of squish it down so that it lines up. And the reason this doesn't matter too much, although now not 100,000% perfectly accurate, is because the, this isometric sort of artwork is only accurate to three decimal points anyway. Um, and for the style that we need when it's finished, you can see it looks all right. It's not going to cause too much trouble. OK, but you can already see that there's some discrepancies between this sort of semi finished model and the three planes that we've created already, as I mentioned earlier. OK, for example, when we've created this side panel, we've now got a floating element here that we know is actually the right hand side of this element underneath. OK, we've got this corner that we know dips down, but because we've done it from planes of flatness, um, they don't quite line up, but that's OK because you can actually create this using the elements that you've got. You know that this curve here is going to be the exact same curve on this side here. OK, for example, um, you know that these are actually recessed in. So we just need to add those in. These corners obviously actually need to meet up. So it's quite a simple process, but it is manual and it takes a little bit of sort of figuring it out yourself. Um, but it's not too hard. In fact, I'll show you with the easy stuff. 
let's go down to this corner here and we know that this corner is actually curved so if you think about it as a real object all you need to do is just add a line here that causes those two, those two shapes to meet up it's probably best to go from the edge curve of your path link it up here and just click and drag until that lines up roughly visually to what you're happy with and now this corner of the game boy is finished okay they're not all as simple as that unfortunately uh, otherwise it'd be a much easier tutorial but so long as you've got something intersecting or you're on a point of a path it's going to look half decent and you're not going to have to worry too much okay so those are those two corners done already that's nice and easy um, but some of the more complicated ones they're going to need a little bit more uh, playing around okay so you can see that this doesn't line up perfectly but that's okay because we're going to be working with these lines shortly anyway right let's take our direct selection tool zoom in and let's just get rid completely of this section of the line okay so we've only got this little corner here and then all the way up here it now stops there not only is that neatened up straight away but all we need to do now is roughly line these up and the job is a good one okay to do that however it's probably best if we select these different points on this anchor here and duplicate them across so we know it's mathematically the same of this angle and this angle now if you're following along this is going to be a bit easier for you uh, if you're using this to create your own object then obviously you're going to have to figure out for yourself what the different path points and angles and things need to be okay um, but the principles still apply the principles are exactly the same um, I accidentally took an extra shape there that I didn't want, so that's fine. I'll just cut those, paste it in place separately, and now I can duplicate like that, okay? So now that we've got this section, okay, probably don't need that one, so we can just remove it, like so. Now that we've got this section, we can duplicate that across here, okay? Let's check what we've got going on on this one above it. It just dips down like so. So we know that we don't need this corner, so we can just remove that entirely, and that gives us two path points we can line up the rest of these shapes to. For example, let's come in and grab this guy. We know that we're not going to need this because we're just replacing it, so we can remove this corner. We can shift this anchor point down, okay? And then we can use that. to line up to this anchor point here. Just make sure that we've actually got something going on. Get rid of this guy, see what's going on here. And we can use this to line up and intersect like so. Now that's one corner done. We just need to quickly fix this one and line that path up and then we can later when we switch, uh, switch this over we can remove this segment of line okay so let's grab our little path here uh, I'm just going to ungroup this so it's a bit easier to work on grab our little path here and reflect that okay get rid of that because we don't need two of them and now we can bring this over, line up that anchor point. We know that this is exactly the same, and because it's isometric, it's exactly the same facing the other way now. So all we need to do is come through here, probably remove these segments because, again, they're going to be duplicated, like how this one is duplicated as well. Uh, and we can grab our anchor point end here and just line up with that bit. And now we've got that dipped corner, okay? So the only other thing we need to do is if we need to decide whether we want this part to be a point or a curve like we've got at the top. I think the curve looks a little bit better. So we can just manually come in, grab these anchor points like so, and create a little bit of a curved finish like that. Obviously, if you've got the curve there, you don't need these two bits. So you can just bring this up and connect it. Now, that's the most complicated one that we're going to have to do today. Okay. Um, you can see, for example, that some of these don't line up perfectly. If I move this um, 0.07 millimeters, okay, it's not going to affect your artwork visually too much. Um, it's obviously going to be less accurate and not 1,000% isometric, um, but most of the time, that's okay. Um, you'll probably get away with just sort of shifting stuff like that down a little bit shifting that down a little bit it's not going to cause too many problems um in general uh next then just fix this corner at the bottom and keep working your way around your artwork until you create something that you're happy with 
it's a bit hard to do sort of a tutorial on this one in the normal sense because it is so unique to whatever thing you're working on. Um, for example, all of what I was just saying there about the shapes of the corners and things, they're not going to apply unless you're building this particular object. Uh, and that makes it a little bit hard to translate well. But the theory is the same. The principles are the same. Um, and, you know, you can use it for any object that you'd like. So you finish doing all that sort of stuff. You come in and remove this bit, and then you can just add another little line onto here, and job's done. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this one because there's no point doing it again when I've got it here. Uh, and what you guys need to do is just work through until you've got the rough body of the object that you're happy with. Okay. Um, the only extra bits I've done on here, which I didn't show you, we're just neatening up this corner, and I added a little bit down there and removed the lines along here. This is nowhere near finished, though. Um, this is just the main body work, okay? We've still got to do all the recesses, all the um, protrusions for these little volume things here, the external connectors, stuff like that. But the beauty of isometric artwork is everything is either 30 or 150 degrees, okay? So if I draw a straight line and I turn um, this flat line to floor and this flat line to left, and this flat line to, oops, right, for example. If you draw anything flat, it's either going to be going 30 degrees, yep, so naught is here, 30, or it's going to be going 150 degrees, naught is here, 150, all the way around. And that creates right and left. You've got right, left, up, down, yeah? That's everything that you need for isometric artwork. So, for example, if this wasn't here, this little portion here, because I've removed um, this line going down the back and stuff like that, you think, oh, well, now I'm going to have to sort of go in and click and, oh, is that 30? And oh, I'm not sure that look that doesn't look right. You know, that looks a bit wonky. You don't need to do it like that. You just draw yourself a straight line. You use the action to turn it to uh, the right. And now you've got your perfectly 30 degree symmetrical line. You come in, you can grab the scissors tool if you want and snip that line off. Okay, um, so instead of the eraser, you've got the scissors. You can intersect there and just delete that. And then the job's a good one, okay? Um, there's lots of little bits like that, which is basically the rest of this, coming in piece by piece and sorting it out. Uh, for something as complicated as this, I've never tried anything this complicated. It's just going to be a bit of a learning curve for me as well. But if you guys fancy following along with me, give it a go, see what happens, okay? I'm just going to neaten up this entire document so we've just got the one thing that we're working with and no extraneous lines. And then I'll show you how to create all of the cool stuff, like the buttons rising out, the volume icon coming out a little bit as well, and all that lovely stuff. And I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so what I have here is our neatened up, ungrouped line work for our Game Boy. As you can see, nothing here is in a group. You can group stuff if you want, but I find when it comes to selecting stuff and uh, removing all these little tiny elements and creating it, yes, it's messy, but it's actually a little bit easier to handle because you don't have to constantly go around trying to double click things and stuff like that. So let's get to work on raising these buttons, recessing the rest of these grooves and all the stuff like that. It's best to try and take it one plane at a time if you can. So I'm going to start on the simplest one down here, which is the bottom plane. Now I know that this bit's fine along the bottom, but this actually needs to be recessed into the body of the Game Boy because that's how it is on the original. Okay. Now to do that, we just need to figure out how this would look if it was recessed. Obviously there's going to be a little wall here um, and there's going to be a little bit that pokes out and there might actually be another line going through the middle. To work this sort of stuff out, um, it might be a good idea to sometimes have uh, images of the actual artwork with you. Um, for example, if I just bring up the original Game Boy that I used this for, um, like so. You can see, for example, that these, it's quite a low quality grab, apologies for that. But you can see that these are actually tucked in a bit on the corners here, okay? And these are actually recessed in. So it might be worth going to um, Google Images and just typing in Game Boy Original. And just finding a good angle photograph. This one might work. 
Okay, so we can see that these are recessed in, but we want to be able to see the bottom of the Game Boy. So Game Boy original bottom. Um, that one could be useful. Okay, so you can see that this recess goes all the way around. It's actually recessed into the headphone port as well. There's that little dip that we were talking about earlier. Um, could be quite useful for us. So let's dive right in and see if we can't figure this out. That's probably going to look the same if we go back to outline view. Okay, um, down here. I'm just going to line these up. Like that. Okay. That's going to probably look the same there, but over here, if this is recessed in, there's actually going to be a line like this um, that cuts it vertically. And then there's going to be a line this way that meets it, which has to be 30 degrees. Okay, so we can draw a little line. We can turn it flat to right. Oops, try that again. Turn it flat to right. And we can line that up. So that comes in like this, intersects there. This one then has to shrink to meet it, like so. And rather than trying to shrink this one because it's on an angle, we can come down to our scissors tool and we can slice it where it intersects. And then we can just delete that segment, okay? So now obviously this little segment here needs to go. So again, grab your scissors tool, find where the paths intersect. Oops. Um, I need to zoom in so that you can actually grab it on this line, like so. You can then grab that bit in the middle. Oops, if you're clever like me and use the direction direct selection tool, you can grab that piece in the middle and then you can just line up these corners, like so. Okay, that's one. And that's two. Um, now you can see where I've uh, had double lines is if you zoom in really far, you can kind of see that these double up a little bit. Um, that's not a problem because there's not actually going to be any line work in our finished article. Is there it? If there is, uh, you just have to go through and sort of sort that out a little bit. Okay. Now this needs a crease. Otherwise it's going to look like it's not actually got a fold in the middle there. And that's going to help us find where to cut here as well and where to cut for this headphone port. Uh, that's easy enough to do. We just need to draw a really long line and use our isometric tools to turn this to the left and then line up this with our anchor point here. And that gives us the inside crevice of that little groove, okay, which is quite useful. We now know that that's gonna turn to the corner here so we can cut that line at that intersection and we can remove it there. We'll come back to this in a minute. Um, but one thing we probably can do is just to make it a bit easier on ourselves, we can remove this segment now. And just line them up for later. Now there's no line work, like I said, but it's important that those corners meet for when we come to the shape building segment later on. Okay. Um, actually what needs to happen here is this line needs to come down and, oops, excuse me. This line needs to come down and uh, meet this one in the middle because where it's perfectly isometric, those lines would actually line up when it comes around. But there wouldn't be one here because there's no um, actual line there. So that corner is fine. We just need now to figure out this bit. Okay. So if this is where it disappears inwards, we're going to need to cut this segment here. And the good news is if you make a mistake and you cut a bit that you don't need to cut, you can always just add it back in. You know, there's no, no worries or drama there. What I am going to do is just grab all of these um, and bring them down a little bit so that they intersect with this line. Okay. Now, another way to remove these segments rather than um, cutting them with the scissors is you can select all of this and use the Shape Builder tool. Uh, here and you can hold alt and just get rid of these little segments here. Sometimes that works a little bit easier. It's completely up to you um, I can do the same for example with these little stick out bits now that we know they're gonna need to be cut Oops, excuse me. That is the scissor tool Like so and that they're now gonna need to disappear into the body now to disappear into the body same thing draw yourself a vertical line horizontal line uh, turn it flat to right and use that to go 
into the body like so. Okay. Um, again, you can use shape builder or scissors tool. It's up to you to um, merge those shapes back together. Remove maybe that little line segment there with the standard selection tool. Okay. Um, use the scissors tool to cut here. So it really is completely up to you. Scissors, direct selection, um, shape building tool, uh, anything that works really. Now that that's disappeared in, we're going to need to create the lines for the rest of this uh, headphone port here. Um, and just quickly double check our work. So that is actually now going to need to extend this way a little bit further. I think that's going to have to stop here and go back in. Like I said, I'm figuring this out along with you guys, so bear with me. But I'm pretty sure that that's going to have to line up with here. And cut in like that. Or is this part going to have to come further down? So if that's the back wall and this is the front, that's fine. This line could probably actually just go completely. Oops, excuse me. This line. Yeah. That's better. But then here, this would actually stop and disappear in with it. Like so. So that would actually be like that. And that would be like that. And then this little portion should be cut. Excuse me. Should be cut like that. And these lines can come back up like here. And back up here. Uh, and then this path can move down. Oops. Uh, this path here and that anchor point can be removed. Now, if that's the top line that's coming on, that's where it's going to be cut then that groove in the center needs to be um, removed from there. So let's check back to our section here. So that's a missing section like this. Obviously, this all depends entirely on how accurate you want it to be. Um, I would probably leave it how it was. Like so. and then create these lines here going at 30 degrees to cap off that headphone jack. Um, just because some things that, where this isn't a blueprint, some things that are too difficult to, to do may not be worth the time and may not actually look good in the final result. They might be correct, but not look nice, if that makes sense. So we can come in, line this up with our Headphone port. Make sure that it is actually overlapping a little bit, which looks like it is. If you're not sure, obviously you can come in with the scissors tool. And if you can't get an anchor that gets both of them, then they're not lined up. So we can shimmy that over just a little bit. In fact, you could probably overlap it slightly, like so, and then you'll be certain that that is intersecting. And then obviously you can just remove that extra bit of the path there. And you could do the same thing here, intersect. And remove that bit of the path that you don't want. Okay, so let's just duplicate this line down to the bottom. Line it up again. Obviously the more accurate you can be, the better. But if you're having a bit of trouble, no one, unless they zoom into a thousand million degrees, is ever going to see any different. So, and obviously, this is going to render by pixel. And because we're working on a non pixel um, basis here, uh, there's going to be a bit of sub pixeling anyway. So, not too much of a worry. Okay, there we go. And we've got our headphone port sort of diving in there and um, our groove working along the bottom. Okay, looks good to me. Uh, we now need to cut these grooves in and let's just double check that that does happen. Yep, so those are cut in and they curve around to where the headphone port is. 
So we can take that. Now where these are curved, what you could do is if you wanted to, you could come in like so and actually curve the edges. Um, of your Game Boy here. So you can just then take these extra lines that you don't need and get rid of them a little bit. Take your shape builder tool, sort of blend these together. So um, like so, and then get the rest of this shape builder. Blend those together. Oops. And then fix those paths up. Okay. And then you could create the curves like that going all the way through, um, which I think I'll do because that looks all right. So we can now just actually copy these across, I think, until they line up and we can remove all of those curves, okay? Um, that might be a bit long for the tutorial though, so I'm gonna leave them sharp and cornered. Uh, and I'm just gonna come through and neaten this up a little bit. By removing all these double lines that we've got here. In fact, we're probably going to have to remove these ones as well because they wouldn't be there, they'd be tucked further in. Okay, for this one then, it might be worth um, duplicating this whole bit now. Yeah, probably. So let's grab this whole segment here, uh, shift it down to create however deep we want that to be, which helps us by creating the dips here that we need. Now we just need to decide which of these elements we need to keep, okay? So that also needs to come down as well if we were going to duplicate that um, in the final product. I think I'll leave it how it is for now and come and do that back manually later on. Okay, so we just created the recess here. Let's grab both of these shapes and remove the elements we don't need with the shape builder tool. For example, we don't need that part because it's going to be hidden, but we do need this guy. And we don't need this part because that's going to be hidden like so. Okay, um, that needs a line there. However, we can probably do the rest manually. So that gives us the edge of our dip on this side, meaning we can come in with our pen tool and just create some corners here. This little section needs to go because he's not going to be there. Just delete that individual anchor point as well. Um, and that means we can add some cut marks here and move these over to the edges. Now, like I said, this is going to be a long one. Obviously, I'm only doing the simple side at the moment. So once I've finished this portion, I'm probably going to fast forward through the rest until we get to making the buttons up here and some of the more fun stuff. So um, I'll keep working on this, but I'll fast forward it a little bit so you guys don't have to sit through two hours of this sort of thing. Um, and I'll see you on the other side. So for this segment to determine the depth of the line here, we can just duplicate this segment and rotate it so it's flat. Then we can turn it flat to floor, oops, excuse me, uh, flat to right, um, which gives us the depth of this groove, like so, okay? And then we can come up with this line until it intersects here. And that gives us the depth of where to place this element, which is going to be, if we're correct, along these points here. Okay, so we can grab this guy. Now that we know that length, and we can shorten it, oops, excuse me, uh, with the scissor tool. Remove that section here. Okay. And now we can draw a line all the way through these bits, knowing that that is where the groove line is going to be. Okay, so figuring out that if um, that's the dip, that's going to stay out. That's the dip here, that corner is going to stay, and that's the dip there. 
Now, it might be worth when we're done adding in these lines back in, um, but it really depends on uh, your personal preference because obviously there's going to be no line work in the final thing. So it's whether it's worth your time if you're going to do line work or not, um, if you're going to want that level of detail or not, completely up to you. So here what I've done is I've just duplicated, uh, well, first of all, I turned the text to outlined and then I've duplicated it by dragging alt and drag down. Uh, and now I'm just connecting up all of the vertical axes uh, in order to create the uh, 3D sort of effect on this piece of text here. Uh, you can see I've already done the P, it's actually quite simple. Um, all you've got to do is just connect up anywhere where the two shapes require a vertical axis, like so, okay, with a simple line. Then you just go to your Shape Builder tool uh, and you connect all the shapes until only the planes that you need remain. For example, on the P here, I just connected all the shapes together until it looks like it's a solid object. Uh, I'm going to continue to do the rest on here and um, I will show you in normal speed um, how to sort of join these up okay uh, it's best to add in lines even if you know they're not going to be seen like this line here on the end just because it gives you a feel for the actual shape okay uh, and when you just come to the shape builder tool later on you can just sort of smush them all together anyway um, it doesn't really matter of course if you know what you're doing or if you've done this a few times feel free to skip any steps that you feel like you don't need. Okay, um, so let's just connect up this last bit of the S here. Anywhere where there's a visual edge, that's all you're looking for. Like so, we know that's gonna need to be a plane. And we need that one. And that rest of it is fine. Okay, so we've got all of our sections of our shapes here like this. Let's just click all of them so they're all selected and go to the Shape Builder tool. Now what we need to do is just we know that all these segments are going to be one plane, so we can just come through and join them all together. We know that that's going to be one shape, this is going to be one shape, this part is one shape, this part is one shape, and all of these parts and all of these parts. And there you go, you're finished. Actually, really, really simple. Um, and you don't have to do it all in one click either, you can obviously come through and do it all. Oops, that was one click too many. Um, what happened there was this isn't connected properly. So we can just come through and zoom in and find out where that's not lined up with our direct selection tool and we can have it intersect with the path a bit better. So drag until it intersects, drag until it intersects, go back to your shape builder tool and then that should be it. There we go, fixed. Do the same thing here, put those together and voila. Like I said, quite simple. But again, quite time consuming. This isn't a quick thing to do, unfortunately, but it does get really, really good results. Um, so I'll speed through the rest of these letters and I'll drop back in when there's something interesting to say. Okay, and after a bit of uh, faffing around and figuring things out, we are done with the bottom plane of our Game Boy here. Um, I'm going to just quickly run through this side portion um, until I get to the volume and external connectors, and then I'll drop back into normal time uh, and explain that a bit, because the rest of this is quite simple, but this might require creating some extra shapes and things. And then we'll finally get onto the meat and bones, which is the top portion of the screen here. So hang in there, one more fast forward, and then I'll drop in to do some interesting stuff with you guys.
Okay then, so we have done quite a lot on the bottom here. Um, we've created each of these individual little blocks here. That took a little bit of time. We've done all the letters along here, same way as we did along the bottom. And I've 3D'd this little port here. The one that I'm going to do in normal speed is this volume wheel um, because A, I don't quite know how to do it, so I thought we'd figure it out together, and B, it's a circle, so it's going to be slightly different. Um, hopefully not too different though. Uh, the way I'd probably try and figure this out, first of all, is uh, the first thing you need to do is create a star and give it as many spikes as you want your cog to have. So I'm going to say maybe that many looks good to me. And make sure that that circle in the middle is roughly the size that you're going to want your final shape to be. OK, once you've made that star, go back to your ellipse tool and from the center, draw a perfect circle that just slightly overlaps. This creates the outside of our cog. I'm going to say about there. OK, from there, we can choose um, intersect. And what that does is it creates uh, the outside of our cog sections here by chopping off the rest of the star. We can then create a smaller star that just about covers the spikes so that the insides are um, uh, flat rather than pointed. And then we can merge those two together. And that creates our cog. Now, this might take a little bit of a while, but what we're going to do is if we duplicate that first, we've got a safe flat copy. Uh, we can go to our actions panel, turn that flat to floor. We can then duplicate this. So it's offset by about the height that we need, which I'm going to say is about that much. OK, now what we need to do. Well, the first thing we can do is with our shape builder tool is we can remove this middle segment. So they're all joined up and make sure there's nothing overlapping there which is not, that's all good. Um, and now we just need to go through and add in the sections of the edges of our cogs, which is quite easy because it's all perfectly vertical. You go down like this and just add in all the little extra bits. This does take a little while though. So again, I'll fast forward through this segment. Now this might have been easier to do, come to think of it, um, with a extruded shape, um, but I've never done that. I'm not sure what the angles would look like when you rotate them, whether you'd be able to achieve an isometric style. You probably could, um, but seeing as I'm a few hours deep in this now anyway, I've kind of gotten into a routine, um, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, just got to finish these up, and then we'll be ready to merge all these into the flat shape that we need. Now, it's obviously, I don't need to create all of these. I just need to create the ones which is visual, so I don't need to bother going all the way around. But what I'm trying to do is just capture any points um, that I think I'm going to need, which I think is all of those. OK, so now I've got my cog. All I need to do is select all of these and just very slowly and carefully making sure not to make any mistakes. I need to go in and start merging all these shapes together until it only leaves the lines that I require. OK, so let's start on an easy bit to show you what I mean. All this is fine because there's nothing overlapping. But as soon as you start to move over here, there's bits that overlap that you're going to need to merge together like so. OK, now that bit's all right. The rest of this here is fine, but all this needs to be merged in. That needs to be merged there. This needs to be merged here. All of this is one flat plane, similar to the text that we were doing earlier, essentially. And all of that is on flat plane as well. And then that's now led us all the way around where we don't need any more on that side. So we can come back here. And our first problem is right here, which we can merge. And another one here. And another one here. That needs to be fixed there. Uh, that needs to come up like so. That can be fixed here, that can be flattened there, that can be brought in here. That's all one flat section. And this probably just needs one cog piece coming down. I think I messed up there, but that's OK, because I don't think that bit's actually going to be visible anyway. So let's leave that for now. OK, now we have the section of our cog that we need. We just need to group this together just to make it a bit easier for ourselves and we can move it over and line up onto our shape. OK, probably needs to be a bit smaller, but again, because it's isometric, it doesn't actually matter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line up this element here with the edge of that box and then shrink this side down until another one roughly lines up here. 
So it looks like it's disappearing into it, like so, okay. Then I know that it's the right size and I can bring it in a line like that. The next step then is to just duplicate this shape underneath, paste it in place on top, and just for ease of visibility, I'm gonna shift this over there now so you can see what we've got here, okay? Now, I don't need all of these shapes inside of it. That's just gonna cause trouble. So I'm gonna select all of these inner rectangles and remove them. Like so. I'm also gonna take this shape underneath, copy, paste in place, and I'm just gonna shift that over for a second. Now, um, I need to take this place, this rectangle on top, and this rectangle here, and I know now that I can remove anything behind of this, and then I can remove the lines inside of that rectangle as well. So again, with the shape builder, and we're doing this, we've got a neat cog left over just in case we mess up essentially. We can come in with the shape builder and we can just get rid of all this, get rid of it, get out of here. Okay, get rid of all the extra points that we don't need. Ah, come on, nah, I'll get that one later. Um, that looks all right. So we'll hold there for a minute and we can delete that. Oops, excuse me. Let's ungroup this now because we need to work with the individual points. Okay. And all we need to do now is take our rectangle here, grab our skizzers tool, find the point where it aligns, intersect it. And we can now remove this line segment safely. So let's removing this line segment safely and the rest of them as well. There we go. I think I might have moved a little bit too much there. Nope, seems to be okay. All right, good. We've now got that shape that we need, so let's group that back up. You can see there's a little bit of doubling lines up and stuff um, where we've created shapes before, so you might be able to be, if you're lucky, go in and just quickly get rid of that. Okay, where that shape has sort of overlapped. So we'll just come through here. See if we can't remove some of these. Again, it won't matter where there are only lines because when it comes to coloring this, we're not going to see it anyway. But I'd freak out if I saw all this, so I'm just going to quickly fix it. Like so. And this is just where we didn't line it up perfectly earlier. But that's okay. It only takes a few clicks to fix. Again, I'm working through this sort of process myself. Oops, I deleted some lines there by accident. So I'll just put those back in. Uh, I'm working through this process myself um, for the first time. Uh, so obviously, if I do something that is silly, let me know if you know a better way um, because by all means I'm not perfect at this actually I think I'm going to have to undo everything I just did <laughs> saying that I'm not perfect at it um, because I accidentally deleted a bunch of stuff there and it's all curved not flat but that's okay we can keep that let's group this together and bring it over here uh, yeah because I'm figuring this out as I go so if you know a better way please do let me know I'm not going to take offence um, let's grab this and line it up Okay, and now that it's lined up, what we can do is just shift that out the way, delete this one, and shift that back down. Okay, now if we wanted to, what we could do is put this line back in that we've removed here, so that goes down like so, and then we could 30 degrees it up there just to sort of fill that hole back in, which I think I'll do. Um, so we'll take this, we'll take a standard line, and we'll 30 degrees it and we'll put it back in and when you use the line segment tool it's much easier to reduce a line's length based on um, its angle as well because you get this handy line extension thing so I can bring this all the way back down here leave it there at the line extension and then I can easily copy this 
shift it along the line extension again and adjust it again okay so if you do that with the pen tool sometimes it gets a bit confused and it won't give you a line extension and you don't quite realize how much you miss it until you can't use it anymore there we go okay and there is our cog um last thing to do is obviously take this bottom line here um oops excuse me just this bottom line here we can cut it with the scissors um here and we can cut it with the scissors again sorry i thought i needed one there just so we can create a nice little middle section that we can remove and then taking this here we can reduce the line to the edges of the cog using the line extension and there we go there we have our 3d isometric cog bit and that is the finished side edge so i'm going to happily delete this guy here but i'm probably just going to cut this dude and stick him on my other layer with all the flat artwork just to keep it safe for now because um, i might need that later but that is it for this side and the bottom here I think that's more than enough for episode one. So this is going to be a two-parter. Um, episode two, we're going to tackle all of this cool stuff on the top. Um, and I'll probably do sort of all of this bit here without too much fast forwarding, just so you guys can get a really, really in-depth look at it. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a very popular series. I think it's quite a niche little thing. Um, so who knows, though? Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Um, if not, I've only wasted several hours of my life, so that's fine. <laughs> Happy isometric making, guys, and I'll see you all next time when we tackle all the buttons on the top here. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.